Dajia hao, kumusta? My name is Victor and in today's video, I'm going to show you guys how I edited my iPhone 14 Pro cinematic video and how I kind of color graded and matched it to the best I can to my camera. Now, it's not a perfect match, but I mean, we can definitely make some improvements. So these steps are what I use for GoPros, action cameras, uh, drones as well to kind of just soften the image just in case you're using beginner level gear. Now we're gonna edit everything in DaVinci Resolve, which is my program of choice. DaVinci Resolve is an industry standard for Hollywood movies to be colored and to make it look how it looks. Obviously there's exposure, lighting, set design, everything that comes into a movie production, but their program of choice for coloring is DaVinci Resolve. And it's free, so let's get into DaVinci Resolve and start editing. All right, so we're gonna start from scratch. So on here, we gotta add a few nodes. This will be our CSD, which is your color space transform. Second one will be your balance, white balance, exposure, adjustments to S log three conversion. All right, so now we have the node structure for this one. I'm gonna explain each and everything on here. So we're doing two conversions here. The reason why is because one, we want to work with the S log three. Okay, so let's look up color space transform and this is the very first one and what we're going to do is that we are going to go into rec 709 output color space would be sony s gamma 3 dot cine and then we're going to look for s log 3 and now it converts the video into a flat profile now this is an s log 3 format the reason why is because we are using my own LUTs. Now you can use any conversion LUTs for S-Log3. You can use the free ones from Sony or you can use mine as well. doesn't matter. Again, CSD is turning your Rec. 709 iPhone footage into S-Log3. So now we're just going to go into S-Log3 conversion again. Now we're going to use my film conversion LUT right here. So now the colors are kind of back, but it's within my S-Log3 color space. Going to balancing first, we're going to find a white color value. So we balance the whites so that it's easier to color grade later on. Okay, so we're going to go right click and we're going to do show picker RGB value. So we're going to hit qualifier on here so that we get this eyedropper tool and she was wearing white pants that time and that we can see that it's almost neutral. We're going to just subtract a little bit of the red and that we're just tiny bit going back to there and we're just gonna subtract a little bit of the green as well. So now white balance, I think the white balance is pretty good. You can play around with it. I like it a little bit warmer. Uh, we're just gonna add warmer temperature in there for exposure. Okay, so we're gonna go just offset the gain a little bit so that it goes back to kind of like a normal value and then the blacks are a little bit crushed. So we're gonna do the lift just a tiny bit. The You can see that the hair is completely crushed and we can't really retain that anymore. Even if we kind of like push the blacks up, you can see that it's just clipped. It's There's no information on there, it's just black. So we're just gonna leave that be. We're going to just uh, lift up the blacks just a tiny bit more. And then we're gonna use the curves now on here on the next node. And I'm just gonna bring it back a little bit and give the highlights just a touch. Now we're gonna move into the look. Now this is kind of like subjective. Uh, I like it a little bit green on the greener side because I like it a little bit filmic. And then for the shadows, I like it a little bit cooler. So we're just gonna add just a tiny bit. And if you can see the minor adjustments really did work on here already. And that for the highlights, we're just going to give it a little bit of a warmer tone, kind of just a contrast between cool shadows and warm highlights. Okay, so now we're done with the look. Again, this is very basic grading and uh, we're gonna do the look adjust as well. I'm just gonna increase the saturation a little bit because it's a little flat and that you gotta watch out for oversaturated stuff. Now for the secret sauce, this is the secret sauce. So this will turn our iPhone footage into kind of like a camera look. 
Okay, so let's remove RGB values and we're just gonna zoom in right here. You can see that this is super sharp and that with the blur, let's go to effects and we're gonna go lens blur and now we can't see anything. We're gonna go to octagon and that's the shape of it. And the blur size is what we're just going to change. So now you can definitely see how sharp it is and it's now soft. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do sharpen edges right here. And we're just gonna go back in here, right? So usually the default one is pretty good. If you're not satisfied with the sharpness, really kind of livens it up just a little bit more, but not too much that it still looks like an iPhone footage. Now, I find that this is a little too much, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna remove the sharpening just a little bit more. And with this scene, I actually prefer it a little softer. So this is the original sharpness, and this is with blur and sharpened edges. It just makes the image softer. It's not overly sharp an entire range. We're just bringing back a portion of that sharpness mostly the edges, and it's not too strong like what the stock Apple over sharpening is from the camera. Now, my favorite part is the halation, which is it just makes your scene glow a little bit. And this is where we can play around with the sharpness again. Uh, I'm just gonna lower it down and that should do the trick. Okay, and then the halation is a little bit too strong. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna test out the uh, strengths and we're gonna look at the isolated region. It's actually getting a lot of the footage, which is not too good. Okay, that's perfect. And then go before and after, increase the strength. Okay, that's good. It just glows the edges and it kind of just simulates film. And then last, but definitely not the least, which is glow and also one of my favorite effects. This mimics a diffusion filter, which it makes the highlight glow. So this is a little bit too much. What we're gonna do is that we just want a little bit of the highlights blooming. And obviously we don't want to overexpose it. So watch out for your vector scopes here, your waveforms, and that uh, we're just gonna bring the gain just a tiny bit. And then now you can see that it's glowing the sky and a little bit of the footage right here. Now you can see before and after right here without, with, without. So now what we're gonna do with the other footage is that we're just gonna copy this, grab still, and it's going to be in the first one, right? And then we're just gonna drag this. And it's pretty much just gonna copy everything. Now, everything is here. We're just gonna adjust it a little bit more since the look is a little bit on the magenta side, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add more green into this to make it look like what it looks on the actual iPhone video. Uh, we're gonna lift the shadows and then we're also gonna lift the highlights. What we're gonna try and do here is that we're gonna limit the gain of the highlight and I find that the exposure on this one, the shadows are a little bit lifted. So we're just gonna bring that back down and we're done. We're gonna do the same with the next shot. With this one, we're just gonna drag this one. Uh, as you can see, the glow is a little bit too strong. So we're gonna just turn those off first and we're just gonna add more green into here. So it kind of looks like my final footage. And then the exposure, we can bring the shadows a little bit more, but that should be good. And then for the highlights, I kind of wanted to retain the overexposed look. It was very bright that day. And that uh, if we bring this down, yes, we can recover something, but it just looks weird. I kind of don't like it. Okay, so now we're overexposing the white parts just a tiny bit. Uh, this is kind of like more than I like. Perfect. And then the adjustment on here, right there. And we're just gonna bring the shadows a little bit down and the midtones. Okay, perfect. And that's it. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go to halation and we're gonna check everything. Everything is glowing 
And also we're gonna do the shine threshold for this and make the gain a little bit less. The halation is actually super strong. So just reduce the strength here. And we're just gonna bring down the highlights just a tiny bit so we can get a little bit of the details on the gate. And that's it. Perfect. Now for the nighttime shots, it's practically the same. Drag this right here, go to the look, and then push this to green and perfect. And what we're gonna do is just, we're gonna keep a little bit more of the green on the shadows. We're gonna bring down the lift and that the gain should be a little bit more orangey. And we're gonna go to the adjustments and we're just gonna lift up the shadows a little bit more because it's a low light scene. And then the highlights, we're gonna bring it down to kind of just recover what we're seeing on here. This was before and this was after. So now let's turn off the effects right here. And you can just see the halation popping up. As we can see here, there's a lot of noise in the low light video from the iPhone. And that's just the nature of a small sensor. And what we can do to fix this is to just add another node right here and we're just gonna move this a little bit and we're gonna call this noise reduction, NR for short. We're gonna play around with the threshold. Perfect. Now what we can see here is that we're gonna disable it. This is the starting point and that when we turn on noise reduction, it just softens it up a little bit more and again, we can't fully get rid of this. Maybe there's a plugin that does better noise reduction from the DaVinci Resolve one, but that's about it. This is as best as we can get on nighttime scenes for iPhone footage. And that's everything you need to know about my editing in terms of mobile action cameras and beginner drones. And as usual, I'm giving away my S-Log3 LUT pack and all you have to do to win is comment down below what do you think about my coloring workflow to help you or did you learn something new? And if you do want the LUT pack now, it's available in the link down below. And if you want to learn how I color grade my professional work, check this video right here and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. No, I'm not.